Good afternoon everybody and welcome to this month's Tea and Chat. My name is Jess and I work here in Devices Library. I've got the all important tea, I've got some lovely poems to share with you this afternoon and just a little bit of book chat. So I've been away in Stratford for the last couple of days and as it was Shakespeare's birthday um, at the weekend I thought I would start with a lovely piece uh, by William Shakespeare from a Cymbeline. So while we were in Stratford we did all sorts of bits and pieces but we did go and see the brand new play Hamnet which was based on Maggie O'Farrell's award-winning book which was fabulous. Now I'm not going to read Hamlet or Hamnet for you this afternoon but as I say I'm going to start with a piece from Cymbeline called Hark Hark the Lark. Firstly, though, I'm going to have a nice sip of tea. Bear with me. Very nice. Thank you. Right. Hark, hark, the lark at heaven's gate sings and Phoebus' gins arise. His steeds to water at those springs on chaliced flowers that lies. And winking, merry buds begin to ope their golden eyes with everything that pretty is. My lady sweet, arise, arise, arise. Short but sweet, but from Cymbeline, Act 2, Scene 3, from uh, William Shakespeare, called Hark, Hark the Lark. Now, what have you been up to since the last time we spoke? Believe it or not, it was January the last time uh, we were all together, um, and a lot has changed in my garden, as I'm sure you can expect. So last time I was looking forward to the spring to come and I'd like to tell you that the temperatures here in my garden are tropical and warm but they haven't been quite as spring-like as perhaps um, I would like. Although what I would say about today, she says looking out of the window, it does look pretty good out there today. So our next poem is uh, called April's Charms and I'm hoping before the month is out we might see a few more of April's Charms and the poem is written by W. H. Davies. When April scatters coins of primrose gold among the copper leaves in thickets old and singing skylarks from the meadows rise to twinkle like black stars in sunny skies when I can hear the small woodpecker sing and hear the pleasant cuckoos loud and long, that simple bird that thinks two notes a song. When I can hear the woodland brook that could not drown a bay with all its threatening mood, upon these banks the violets make their home and let a few small strawberry blossoms come. When I go forth on such a pleasant day, one breath outdoors takes all my cares away. It goes like heavy smoke when flames take hold of wood that's green and fill a gate. Great, sorry, a grate with gold. I love that uh, that description of the cuckoo because um, so many birds have such wonderful songs, uh, but the simple bird that thinks two notes is a song uh, appeals to me quite a bit. <laughs> That was uh, April's Charms by W. H. Davies. It also mentions one of my favourite birds, which is the skylark from the Meadow Rise. I've done a lot of um, coastal walking and I have lovely um, memories of green and brown cliffs, beautiful blue waters, beautiful blue skies, and that lovely <coughs> song of the skylark just sort of uh, accompanying me on my journey all the way across, um, all the way as I go. I'm looking slightly behind me, it's just I have a cat that's wandering about. So if a cat makes an appearance, I do apologise. <laughs> um, the next poem I'd like to read is uh, mentions the lovely Skylark, that's why I thought I'd talk about it. Um, and it's by uh, W.E. Henley, and it's called The April Sky Sags Low and Drear. Time for a little bit more tea though, bear with. Very nice. I hope your tea or coffee is tasting just as good as this one is. So this is W.E. Henley and the April sky sags low and drear. The April sky sags low and drear. The April winds blow cold. The April rains fall grey and sheer and yearlings keep the fold. But the rook has built and the songbirds choir and over the faded lea the lark soars glorying gyre on gyre and he is the bird for me me too for he sings as if from his watchman's height he saw this blighting day 
The far veils into colour and light from the banners and arms of May. Isn't that lovely? Spring is coming, I promise. It might not feel like it, but I think it will soon be here. Now, what have you been reading since we last met? I'd love to tell you that I'm reading some very highbrow, very exciting uh, literature, but I really am not at all. Uh, I'm reading A Guilty Pleasure, which I will share with you now. This is um, Nor Roberts' Nightwork. It's not her newest book, but it's sort of the one just before that, so it's a couple of years old now, and I am thoroughly thoroughly enjoying it it's a guilty pleasure of mine so we meet um the lovely harry who is a cat burglar a gentleman thief as i like to call him um because he has to um his mum gets ill with cancer when he was nine years old and she can't afford to pay the mortgage and pay the bills anymore so he, uh, it's set in america so she uh he takes to night work, as he calls it, to pay the mortgage, pay the bills, and he finds that he is actually pretty good at it. So I haven't quite finished, I don't know if you can see my bookmark just there, I haven't quite finished it, but I'm thoroughly enjoying it. And uh, for a nice uh, take me away from the world read, um, this is one I would recommend. I hope you're reading something very, very good too. Now, my next poem, and my last poem, in fact, is going to be uh, by A.E. Houseman. Um, eons ago, when I was at university, I had to do a horrible exam on poetry, which uh, had four poems in it, and um, you didn't know who'd written the poems or anything, you just had four, four verses, and the whole concept of the um, exam was you had to identify the poet and explain why uh, this was a you know particularly typical of that poet's work uh houseman was one of the ones i got right but I'm, I'm not quite sure i can't actually remember whether i got them all right but i remember houseman being there and me me spotting the houseman poem going oh thank god i recognized one of them at least so um as i mentioned earlier when we last spoke in january i was talking all about trees and that the year, the seasons of the year so i thought i'd bring that that back with this poem by a houseman from a shropshire lad too and it's called the loveliest of trees time for a bit more tea though bear with very nice so the loveliest of trees the cherry now is hung with blossom along the bough and stands about the woodland's ride, wearing white for Easter tide. Now, of my three score years and ten, twenty will not come again, and take from seventy springs a score, it only leaves me fifty more. And since to look at things in bloom, fifty springs are little room, about the woodlands I will go to see the cherry hung with snow. Now on a day like today, um, I hope you are able to get out into the sunshine and uh, take a breath to uh, clear all your cares away like we had in one of the poems, or perhaps have a mooch around a woodland to see if you can still spy some cherry blossoms hung, maybe not hung with snow, but hung with the cherry blossom would be lovely. Next month's Tea and Chat is with Philip on the Salisbury Facebook page, so be sure to join him in uh, in a month's time. In the meantime, though, I will see you again in July. I hope you enjoyed this afternoon's poems and sitting down for just a few minutes with me, some uh, poetry, some tea, and, of course, a little bit of book chat. And I hope to see you all again soon. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>